Hi there guys, I'm Chris Bowden and you're not. Welcome to The Geek Group where today we're going to take an in-depth look at the how-to with the Volcano Inferno. We've had a lot of questions on this since we did the original Inferno you know, quick unboxing video and we wanted to do a real one of showing people how to use it, you know, covering all the basics instructions. So for the first time ever, I actually have notes in a video. I have an original proof of the Inferno instruction manual, which is kind of cool. And I'll be referring to that to make sure that we cover every single possible thing you could want to know. Now, first off, let's start basics. The Inferno comes in three different fundamental forms. They're all exactly the same. The only thing different is the color. So we're, for the purpose of this one, we're actually going to use my Inferno, which is a silver. But they come in stainless, with silver, chrome, whatever. Um, and with the kit, you get, if you look inside, they come with two full units. You get the 650 milliamp hour one, which is, see, understand, once you take the, the Addy and Tip off, there, that, the Addy and Tip is the same on each. So we'll, we'll get rid of that. So that's, that's the, the fundamental differences there. You've got the 650 milliamp version, which has the USB pass-through in it. You can see the, the socket there is a standard mini USB plug. And then there's the big one, which doesn't have a plug. This is just a battery with the button. And this is a 1,000 milliamp battery. So it'll last you all day, no problem. So that's, that's the basic units. And they come with the afterburner cone, which is really just a, a pretty shroud, makes it look nice, makes it look kind of like a cigar. And they come with the guard, this is the, the button protector guard, which goes on there like that, and it'll spin around a little bit, and what it is is basically just a little guard with some tabs down on the inside. And this goes over the button, so that you can put it in your pocket or whatever, or you can put it in a jeans pocket and, and not hit the button. Because remember, this one doesn't work like the magma or the volcano. This is actually a push to vape system. It, the other ones work on air, on a vacuum. When you draw air through it, it turns a switch on. With the big inferno, they don't do that. They actually have a button. So when you push the button down, it applies power to the atomizer. And we'll get into that in a bit. So I'm gonna put this back together real quick. Put my Addy on there and my cone. Cool, so we'll come back to that in a bit. I'm just gonna put this in the box. So that's a stainless one. There's also cherry red, which is really snazzy looking. It's the same thing, it's just in red. And they all have the same wavy pattern down them, and there's really good shots of that on the Volcano website. Um, but there's the cherry red version, and then there's the black version which is also quite awesome and doesn't show up on camera very well at all, which is why we went with the stainless for today's video. So we'll grab our box, but now you know they come in three different flavors. They're all exactly the same. They have the exact same capacity. They work exactly the same. The only difference is the paint job they gave the outer housing when they manufactured it. That's the only difference. So let's dig into the box. We've got in the box, when you order it, it will come with a uh, little congratulations thing, go to their website, it'll have a how-to, and the cool thing is, if you go to the website, to the how-to, it'll take you to this video! Ha! So, yeah, it's just cool like that. It comes with a little pouch. Um, also, if you're really motivated, because the little pouch that it comes with is great if you just want something to carry it in, but if you're a little bit more hardcore like I am, a standard mini mag light holster fits this perfectly, just so you know. It'll come with a couple Addies. Now this atomizer may look familiar to you. It's the exact same atomizer used for the magma. That's all these are is a magma Addy. Then uh, it'll come with a USB cord, a little charger, and the wall power supply, and a tip, which is not a drip tip. It also comes with a little warning thing that says, do not use this with 510 batteries or you will cook them. So don't. Um, use this. This charger you should only ever use with the Inferno battery. Absolutely. It, 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 just because the other ones will screw on, you, you can screw a magma battery on here. You will burn the magma battery if you do that. Voltages and stuff is a little bit different. So here's how to use everything. The, the case is pretty much self-explanatory. If you need me to explain to you how to use a foam insert case to put something into it, you have bigger problems than I'm going to be able to fix in a 10 minute video. So. This is a little carry case. It's got a snap. You can carry it in there. It's really simple. This is not rocket science, so I'll assume you've got that figured out. Now, here's how it works. When you first get it, 
you're going to want to charge everything up. It'll have a little bit of a charge on it. They, they have to put a charge on them to, for the manufacturing process to test it in the factory to make sure that it works before they ship it. But you don't want to rely on that. The first thing you really want to do is charge it. Well, the cool thing is all you have to do, to you can charge them both at the same time, which is pretty nifty, um, provided you have a computer. And given that you're watching this on the internet, you probably have a computer. So here's the fast and easy way to charge it. Take your cables apart, and you're going to have your USB-A to Mini-B cable. That's that one. And you're going to have your other cable, which is a USB-A to your charger. So you grab your little charger. If you need it, you may not need this. You, you can run this all off your computer if you, if you want. So you take it apart. It may or may not come assembled. I don't think they come assembled. So take your two batteries. Now, the big one, the 1,000 milliamp hour one, screw this very gently into here. Um, the best way to do it to make sure you don't cross thread it is go hold it on there, apply a light, just fingertip pressure, very light. Go backwards. Here, I'll get this right in the close-up camera. You want to go backwards. Remember, righty tighty, lefty loosey, and you'll feel it click, and then go forwards. And if you do that, this, this works whenever you screw any fine thread stuff together. Um, it'll keep you from cross-threading it. Always go backwards, usually less than one turn, and you'll feel it go chunk, and then go forward, and you get in there. Don't reef it down. It doesn't have to be that tight. Just, just fingertip tight, just nice and snug. Now, if you take this and plug this into your computer, and then leave it alone for a few hours, this one's charged. So that one's cool. And either of these you can plug into the wall charger. This is just basically a little 5-volt power supply. You can plug it in there. as a little USB slot right on the thing. You plug it right in there, and you're good. So that, that's set up for that to charge. Now for the other one, this one's even easier. You take any USB mini B plug and put it right in there, right in the end. You can see there's, there's a little socket and there's a little plug. Same plug that you probably have on a little digital camera. And plug that either into your computer or into the little wall unit. Give it a couple hours and it's charged. It's that easy. Boom. So you can charge them both at the same time. You have enough charging accoutrements with the thing to do them both at the same time, provided you've got a computer. And the charging is really simple. You screw it on there, you plug it in, you wait a couple hours. It takes um, around two hours to charge from a completely dead battery. I just do them overnight. Because the thing with these two batteries, if, <laughs> if you can vape through both of these in one day, then you know you may have some issues that need to be dealt with. You may have a, a little bit of an addictive personality on that. So yeah, I, I have never gone through either one of these in a full day, but that's me. I was about a pack and a half a day for analog, so that's the amount that I smoke. So that's the basic charging setup. Now let's make some vape. Okay, I'm, I'll do this with each just so you, you get the, the whole idea. Now this will work. I use mine with a drip tip. You might use carts. It'll work with either or. It's functionally the same, so we're going to use a drip tip for mine. Now let's start with the little one. Now with the little one, what's cool is this works not only as a battery, but as a pass-through. It'll work the same at the same time. So that's why there's no such thing as an Inferno pass-through. The Inferno itself is a USB pass-through. So what a pass-through is, is for if your particular style is you're a computer guy or something, you spend a lot of time in front of a computer, and you, you usually have access to a USB plug, you'll notice a cable on here is really long. And that's so you can plug this into your computer, and you can vape with this all day long. And you never have to worry about charging or discharging. And if you're going to be away from your computer for a while, you just unplug it and go. Um, when I'm doing a lot of editing, that's exactly what I'll do. I'll just plug this in, pop it right in, back of my keyboard where I got a little USB hub, rock out, I'm all set. So this will work as a pass-through or as a regular one. But whenever it's plugged in and there's power being applied here, it's charging. So that's cool. And it's pretty much impossible to run a battery down doing that. You can vape away all day. Now, let's start with this. Now, to use it, you take one of the atomizers. Now, here is a standard magma atomizer. And they even say magma right on them. Now, you just thread that right in the end. Very simple. Now, that's in there. And then... In my case, I take my, well, here, I'll put the other one in there. Um, I put mine in there. Now, this one has a drip tip on it. And because I'm that cool, I took my stainless colored drip tip, and I put that in there with it. So it's all good. Boop. And it's set. 
So there's your whole thing. Now at this point, it will function. It'll work just fine. It's just kind of ugly. But all you do to vape is you put a couple drops of fluid in there, hold the button down, and boom, it works just like magic. Now all this does is instead of when you when you if you suck on this and you don't push a button down, nothing will happen. You can you can suck on that all day long. You're not going to get anything out of it. When you push the button, that closes the circuit. It applies electricity through the Addy. Um, it is, in fact, 3.7 volts. So it's, it's got a lot of oomph behind it. And it works. If you're not using a drip tip and you're just using a regular cart, you just put a regular cart on there. And it works exactly the same. So that's, that's the inside function. Now the cone goes on over that. This is what you can't do. You cannot have just the Addy and the cone, it won't work right. You won't, you won't be able to get the right draw because the, the air seal doesn't quite work right. It, you can suck on it, it, it'll vape in there, but you can't get anything through because you're trying to draw off the wrong area. Remember, there's a little O-ring right here that seals that off. So if you just do this, you're not going to get anything out of it. What you need to have is some kind of end fitting. You have to have a drip tip or you have to have a cartridge in it. It doesn't matter if it's a drip tip or a cartridge. They'll both work exactly the same. But if you put that on there, you're cool. So that's everything you need to know on there. Now the other one works exactly the same. To use the big one, the 1000 milliamp hour one, you put your Addy in place, and that threads right in. And then you put your cartridge in or your drip tip, and you put the sleeve down over it, and you're all set, and the whole thing works just fine, just like that. Now it looks a little bit different with a cartridge on it. I, I, Personally, like the aesthetic of a drip tip. You can see the differences there. Um, a cart sticks out the end a little bit. Drip tip looks a little different. I like the drip tip. Get them in whatever color suits you. And the cool thing is because the, the magma drip tips, the, it's the magma cartridge, so they work for the magna or the inferno. The magma drip tips work um, for either of these, and the magma drip tips come in so many different colors that you can get one that fits it to match it with the black or match it with the red or whatever you want. Just It's your thing. It's your art. Do whatever works for you. Now, with these, you get the little black plastic guard. And it's, it's obvious, the aesthetic to it, I mean, if you look at it, it looks like a cigar. That's, that's what they're going for. It's, it's, it's not so much an e-cig as an e-cigar. And it makes the, the massive amounts of vape to go with that. But the idea is this looks like a cigar band. And if you have this on there properly, if you have the, the guard on right, it's really easy to put the guard on. You just come straight down over the thing, push it down, and it ties on there. If you have the guard on right, it shouldn't slide up or down, and it shouldn't go more than like, it should roll about, I don't know, about 180 degrees side to side, and, and that's it. it. It should be pretty rigid on there, and it's certainly good enough that you can just toss it in your pocket and forget about it and rock out. So that's that. Now before I forget, no, I'm just gonna leave that alone. So that covers that. Let's see if there's anything else we need to cover in here. Uh, should last all day, between five and 10 hours. We covered how to do charging. We covered how to use the pass-through. We covered, yeah, pretty much covers all the basics. So we see, look at that. We went through the whole instruction manual without even thinking about it. Now there's a couple things here on the very back page that I want to talk about. Um, use the guard. You, it, you don't, and the guard is not fundamental to the use of this, but they put it in there for a reason. The, the reason is if you put this in your pocket because it's button activated, if you just have this in your pocket, especially in like a pants pocket, it can activate. You know, if you, if you squeeze that button, this is going to activate, and you can hear it. Okay, this, this is doing its thing, and if you leave that, it'll cook it, and it'll burn it up, and you'll ruin the Addy or something like that, and it's going to be bad, and you don't want to do that. So use the guard. The, the guard is a little safety thing, and, you know, it protects your investment. Because if you take care of this, it will last you forever. This thing will last years and years and years. You have to change out the Addies in that, but the battery in that, all this stuff, this will last a long time. It's, it's a good, solid thing. So what else we got? Um, there's troubleshooting back here in the end of like, you know, different problems. So let's cover some problems that you could have. Problem, um, it's not making vapor. All right, first check your Addy connection. To check your Addy connection, the atomizer screws in to the end here. Now you'll notice these, these are solid on the bottom. They don't have the holes, like the, the Addy has a little hole in the bottom. Well, that's for using with the magma batteries where they're air activated. So the reason there's no hole there is because this doesn't work on air. It's a push button thing. But for it to work, you have to have a good electrical connection between the bottom and the threads and the threads and bottom and there. 
because each of those is an electrical connection. The bottom is one side, the threads are the other. So keep this clean. Every now and then, uh, a really good way to do it, this is stupid simple, take a paper towel or a piece of cloth. Here, I'll grab a paper towel. I'll show you how this is done. If it starts wigging out on you, put, make a little crease in a paper towel like this. Come at it from the inside. Come around it, just pinch it in your hand, okay? And all I'm doing is this, behind the towel, okay? But just pinch it together and get your thumbnail down in the groove. So what I'm doing looks like this. Okay, get your thumbnail right down in the groove and then unscrew it and roll your thumbnail down the thing. And if you do that, watch, I'll just put this on here and I'll roll my thumbnail right down the threads as I unscrew that. It's really easy to do. And look at that, gunge! See, that's just... It's just dirt and dust and crap and corruption, whatever, I don't know. But you, you get the gunge that builds up in there, and you clean that off. And now it's all shiny and happy and nice again. And that, that oxidation, and it's, it's just basic oxidation, um, it, it's an electrical insulator. So if you clean that off, it'll work again. And you make sure it's in there nice and snug, and ta-da, it works. Okay. Um, make sure it's still holding a charge. They do go dead eventually, so charge them you know, overnight and they'll be fine. Um, make sure that, what else do we have on here? Make sure you don't hit it too hard. Um, these, a lot of people, especially for these where uh, you know, a lot of people are going to be coming to this off of analog cigarettes. With analog cigarettes, if you hit it, you know, the harder you hit it, the more you get. Well, with electronic cigarettes, it's backwards. Because this is only going to make so much vapor. Let's say that for every second you push that button down, it makes five cubic centimeters of vapor. Well, no matter how hard you suck on it, it's always going to make five cubic centimeters of vapor. What changes is if you, if you suck slowly, you're going to get more vapor than other air. Because as you suck on this, you're drawing air in on the little side holes here around the edge, there's, there's little side holes, like around the filter on a cigarette. It's the same concept, it adds an air mixture. It's, it's like a, a carburetor, it's mixing one thing with another. So if you suck really hard, you're gonna get, say, 50 centimeters of air and five centimeters of vape. So you're gonna get more air than vape. So the harder you suck on this, the weaker it gets. It doesn't work like a cigarette does. This is a different technology. Um, check it for excessive buildup and clean if necessary. This, this can build up stuff not only on the back but on the inside. It's a good idea every now and then to just clean them out. You can use basic, uh, vodka works great, it's what I use. Um, I would not use like rubbing alcohol or something like that. If, if you're gonna use a solvent to clean it out, cheap basic vodka. Get like, one of, if, if you don't drink, I don't drink, get one of the little 50 milliliter bottles for a couple bucks of like whatever brand you want. Smirnoff, Stoli, five o'clock, doesn't matter. But just get a little bottle of vodka and put some in the bottom of a glass, put the, drop the Addy right into vodka, shake it around a little bit, and then what I do is to clean it, and we'll do a video specifically on cleaning them, but what I do is I put a little bit of vodka in a glass, just plain old vodka, it doesn't have to be any flavored stuff, it won't hurt it, it'll be fine. Drop this right in the bottom of a glass, put about a thumb's worth of vodka in the bottom of a glass, drop the Addy in the bottom, shake it around for a minute or two, then take the Addy out, and then hold it on end like this and just tap it over a paper towel and then just leave it sitting like that overnight. It'll dry by morning and then it'll work totally normal. No problem at all. Um, if you don't want to give it the time to dry, you actually can vape the alcohol right out of it. And vodka's got a pretty good throat hit. Just saying. Vodka's got a pretty good throat hit. There are people that actually mix vodka with their e-juice to get more of a throat hit. Um, Make sure that your atomizer is not flooded with too much liquid. Um, if you get a bubbling sensation when inhaling, if it sounds like a bong, it's flooded. That simple. If you take a hit off this and you get like, like it sounds like you've got a, a straw in the bottom of a milkshake, and it's just bubbling, bubbling, bubbling. Yeah, if it's making that sound, it's flooded. Quit dripping more into it. This will happen uh, a lot of times if you put a brand new cartridge in it. It'll, it'll flood for the first couple hits. It happens. Hit slow, just hold the thing down, take long, slow hits, and you'll clear it out. It won't stay flooded for long. But if you're dripping and it starts making the bubbly noise, you put too many drops in. It only, when I do this uh, with, with the magma addies, I put three drops in. 
That's it. Three drops and that's a cigarette right there. That's the equivalent to an analog for me. I'll put three drops in, smoke for a few minutes, and I'm cool. I got my vape. I'm happy. I go back to work. So three drops is enough. If you want to have more than three drops, vape the three drops and then add three more after it goes empty. It, you'll be surprised how long three little drops will last you. And you're converting these from a liquid into a vapor. So very few drops creates a whole lot of vapor, especially with you know, this much of a power supply behind it. What else do we have? Uh, it's getting warm when I inhale on my Inferno. Make sure that you're still holding a charge. Uh, clean. Oh, no. Yeah, it says it's not getting warm. Make sure you still have your charge. Um, there's a thing, we, we've, we've had people write in saying, it gets warm when I use it. Well, of course it gets warm when you use it. This is a heating element. So it's normal that the sides of the atomizer get a little warm. Now, if the side of your battery is getting really, really hot, you have a problem. But if the little black thing in the middle, the atomizer, gets warm when you're using it, that's totally acceptable. It's totally normal. If it gets too warm, chill out a little bit. You're using it too much. Um, one is when I inhale, I get liquid in my mouth. Well, that's probably because you're doing it wrong. Um, don't, don't suck like a champion. This is not like, <laughs> it's not a milkshake. Okay, you're just easy. Chill out. Um, if you're getting fluid in your mouth, it's most likely because there's simply too much fluid in there. If it's a brand new cartridge or if it's flooded or something like that, you can get a drop in your mouth. It sucks. Just wipe it off. Go on with your day. But if you're dripping and you're getting fluid in your mouth, it's probably because you have it tilted up. Um, I don't know why, but I've seen people do this. They hold it like this. Well, there's a liquid in there, and if you're dripping, the liquid will run back out. It's a gravity thing. Once the liquid is into the atomizer, it's in the wick. You can see there's a little wick down in there. Once the liquid's in the wick, it's trapped. It'll stay there. That's capillary action. But if the liquid's just sitting in the tube and it's not in the wick yet, and you tilt it like that, the liquid's going to run out the hole. So that can be an issue. Pay attention. Keep it upright. This is how you should hold it, or it... Any angle below 90 degrees, and you're fine, okay? From here down, you're cool. From here up is bad. This isn't rocket science. Um, the LED on your Inferno won't turn off. Um, unscrew the atomizer and jiggle the button on the Inferno. This doesn't happen very often. It's pretty rare, but sometimes it'll lock on. Um, don't bang it. Some people have been writing, oh, you're just smacking on tape. Don't do that. Don't. It's, this is a precision instrument. Don't be banging it around. What you do to turn it off, if it for some reason locks on, is unscrew it, okay, and just gently tap it on your hand. I've never had it happen. I've only heard about it in a couple forums, but apparently it's enough of a thing that they put it in the instruction manual, so now you know. Um, I can't get the cartridge off. Make sure the atomizer is screwed in tightly and pull the M cartridge until it comes off of the M atomizer. Um, to get the cartridge off, this isn't rocket science, to get the cartridge off, you just take off the thing and pull. There should never be any reason why you can't get a cartridge off. This is a drip tip, but it behaves the same as a cartridge. They just slide right in. The cartridge comes like that. If the whole thing comes with it, it's because you don't have this screwed in all the way. This should be screwed. If, if you look on the side, you'll see threads here, and they, there's a flat plate. This should be screwed all the way in so it's flat. The, the plate here should be flat up against the housing. If it isn't, it's not screwed down all the way. And if it's not screwed down all the way, it won't work. Um, the atomizer cone keeps popping off. Remove the cone and clean the O-ring around the Inferno with alcohol wipe to remove any oils and wipe with a clean dry towel. Replace the cone. Okay. If, if the cone here keeps popping off all the time, it's probably because you've got a little bit of gunge down around the O-ring. So just clean that off with an alcohol swab, pop it back on there, nothing to it. So that pretty much covers all of the possible things that you could ever need to know about how to use a Volcano Inferno. If you have any questions, by all means, write in to info at thegeekgroup.org and we will make a video answering your specific question. Anything you could ever want to know about using Volcano stuff, let us know. We are here to help. It's what we're here for. I want to get more people using a smoking alternative. I want you to get off analog cigarettes. They're nasty, they're expensive, and they make you stink. This is still an addictive habit. This is still nicotine. This is not for kids. But it beats getting cancer. Just saying. So I'm Chris Bowden with The Geek Group. You guys have fun. And that is our detailed instructions on the Volcano Inferno. We'll have more for you next time. See ya.